Okay, so last time I resisted the temptation to get this event card because I've been trying to basically I've just been getting all of them whenever I see them just because I'm such a sucker for them. The garlic, also known as the onion, which is always what I would call it for whatever reason in, in the actual PvZ game. Uh, team up when a zombie hurts, just move that zombie to the left as the vampire destroy it. This is kind of a fun effect because it's just kind of very unique and dynamic, but of course I'm not gonna get it. And we are trying to save up for the thousand to be able to get to whatever double bad moon rising I'll, I'll say it every time because that's that almost might act as the checkpoint and finale for this run and somebody was trying to tell me in a comment oh it, it comes out at this time every year or there's like a fixed thing but i i deliberately didn't read it because i don't want to know i think it might be like july or something i accidentally read part of it but whenever it is the point is we'll get it when we get it oh shit we get a legendary just randomly like that and it is for the zombies who have been cocked because the whole theme of this is that the plants have been spoiled the whole run. They've gotten more legendaries. They've gotten a hero, although I guess I got the hero, but still, right? They've been spoiled in like every single way. The zombies didn't get any legendaries so far because the only ones I got were from like a guaranteed pack, which you could say counts, but I mean, just organically in the course of opening a pack, this is actually the first one, right, that I ever got. All zombies get plus two, plus two. That's decent. I don't like it as much as the plant disco ball, though, the actual... Uh, disco walnut thing. I, I forget actually even what it's called, but the one that deals like two damage to everything whenever it gets hit or to the hero when it gets hit. This is okay, but it's so expensive, right? I'm not so sure how I feel about that. Nothing else is even new though. Look at that. Like just all the rare ones. I guess we have like all the common cards in the game apparently. Um... So that one's okay, but is it really, like, th this is like a bootleg Bad Moon Rising, like, oh, we won't turn them into Gargantua stuff, but we'll at least give them plus two, plus two. I feel like I have something that's almost the same thing as this, but just better, like, I don't know, like the little uh, meat one. Doesn't that do the same thing? I'll have to look. Do two damage to each plant, so this is actually kind of a big deal, because this is one of the few AoEs that we've ever gotten. In fact, it might be the only one that we have that's actually decent. When played, make a 1-1 plant with no abilities. Um, so this is just kind of to block them out, but when you consider team up and other things, like why, why is this even a thing? Just to like block a lane if there's somewhere or I don't know. This one's okay. I've used it in some kind of way that triggered people before in like some event game. I, I guess it would have to be from, from some random effect. So it's like, that was like towards the beginning of the playthrough and people were like, oh wow, he's so dumb with how he used it, but as if I would know, right, how exactly how to use it when I had never even had it before. But yeah, that one seems decent, 4 mana, 3, 5. I would have preferred something higher cost, but I guess you can't be picky when, you know, you're just practically begging for any sort of legendary at all. But no, like the plants got so spoiled that they not only got multiple legendaries from packs early on, but they got two Dark Matter Dragon Fruits, so like... I mean, hey, it's more for me, like, it still benefits me in the playthrough, but just from the dynamic of the plants versus the zombies, it seems just very unfair for them, right? And in fact, the zombies have overperformed for the collection that they've had. The plants have been kind of up and down, they've had some good stretches, but... Beast of his bundle, Seinfeld's got a copyright strike them. Or <laughs> I saw this thing like Seinfeld's criticizing the left for their attack on humor because everybody's so sensitive that people get canceled and you have to worry about that on top of everything else. Which you might think is weird for him to say, but obviously he's a billionaire and it doesn't affect him. But it's, I always appreciate when people of that stature do that. Like, uh, what, what was it? J.K. Rowling. Whether you agree with what she says or not, it's like it's kind of good because she's in a position where... You know, she can just say whatever she wants and you can't do anything to her because, yeah, go ahead, don't buy her Harry Potter books now, but you've already done it for like decades. So now, you know what I mean? She's already a billionaire. So <laughs> let's see what we have here. This is kind of stuff that we already have. So if we have three, if we already had two, I'm going to assume I'm not going to add them because... You know, two would probably be enough and I would have already put them in there. This one, I had that one episode where I won like five games in a row with this effect. Not because, oh, it's such a good card, but just somehow it just incidentally happened. And that was kind of funny, right? It was almost like a troll thing. I'm just going to kill you with this guy's two damage ability because I don't use tricks to do damage to face or I just don't like to use tricks in general. So, I don't know. It, it was just kind of a happenstance thing. I certainly don't need another one of those. The Poison Ivy has actually been pretty good for me, but... I'm not a big fan of anti-hero in general. It's just that he sticks around so long, it can be kind of annoying. Uh, when played, move zombies to this lane. Uh, we already, again, stuff that we already had, I probably wouldn't want to add too many more of them. 
But no, what was that other one? Okay, there's a lot of shit for the zombies, though. So, actually, this is very fitting with my title. My title is even saying how the plants have been spoiled, right? The plants are the spoiled child this game has created. And it's like the game responds to me by giving me a zombie legendary. As soon as, not even some at some point during the episode, but as soon as the episode starts. Just from the season ending pack, right? Because I haven't even bought a pack in a super long time, so I guess I can't can't complain too much. But I had gotten some at the beginning, and it just was always favoring the plants. So I don't know whether this is worth doing, but just for the variety of playing new stuff, I guess I should fit them in there. So... Yeah, what is the one that's a buff? We already have... The, the most exciting recent addition was the other Yeti, the four mana Yeti, that kind of you keep flipping it back and getting a new conjured card every turn, which is actually pretty good. Much better than the stupid lunchbox one. Um, what is it that we were talking about? It's like this chicken, right? This chicken or turkey thing that gives everything a buff that seems almost as good as the one we already have or the one we just got. Yeah, what is this? All zombies get plus one, plus one. So you could rather play two of these and get plus two, plus two than play a five cost card. Like it's, you know, the higher cost something is the more of a discount it should feel you're getting so that one should be a four cost card that gives you plus three plus three or whatever a five cost car card that gives you plus plus three plus three not plus two plus two let's see what these things actually go into as far as new addition so he can use the legendary the super brains can use the legendary and the smash can't so that's fine because the smash already has the two nurses so he doesn't feel left out. So at least now every zombie has a legendary in their deck. And the plants have had that for a pretty long while now. And even multiple and even multiple of the same one. So this is an AoE which again generally I wouldn't say that I would care about that. Because we're playing more for aggro anyway. But I guess we would have both the chicken AoE and this AoE. Or just not even AoE removal but just to flip them back just as a finisher You're not using them to get rid of stuff to get control on the board You're using them just to clear everything out so you can just hit them one more time, right? So we could use it in a similar way It is a very good value card because again, how many other cards like that do we have like this technically could count as an AoE? But it's not because how often do I have a zombie in every lane pretty much never so even if I am trying to play that style Okay, that one we don't want yeah, that kind of made it an easy decision. So what do we get rid of now? You know, there's no nuance to thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't use this. Like, obviously, I'm going to use it just for the novelty that it's a legendary or just that it's a new card and something different. You would almost think I should get rid of this. Like, I don't need two of them, but this has been very good also. This is a very good uh, just buff everything plus two, including itself. This thing generally isn't very good, but... There's a few times where it's useful, and again, we don't have any hard removal because the best thing this guy gets, I think, is just the bigger cake, right? The the one that deals like seven, maybe? And so the one, what does the one I have? I don't even think I've been using this. Yeah, deal four. We have to get rid of two things. I guess we have no choice but to get rid of anything that's going to have a three copy to it. This thing has been doing pretty good in the opening. Um... The hard decision. I guess I will get rid of it. No. No, I guess I will. Fine. So we replace a five cost with a four cost and we replace a uh, a two cost with what? What was the other thing that we even got? Wait, what the hell was it? I even just... Oh, the AoE. Which I guess is completely different purposes. Like whenever you replace stuff, you should try to replace something of a similar cost or a similar function. So you're not just replacing it just with something totally random. <clears throat> just for the sake of it because yeah it's a fun new card so i just want to use it but this is uh wait didn't it say that he could use the legendary though how could oh it just appears at the top right because it's new so that garbage dumpster guy i don't really care about too much what's he called stealthy imp <sighs> let's see don't look but there's one right behind you right now that doesn't sound like something somebody stealthy would actually say, though, because you're announcing your presence. Or if your stealthy tactic fails, you'll just use that as a fallback. So we can get rid of the triple in terms of the... Why do I even have three of these, I wonder? Why would I need to do that many bonus attacks? Like, it is a good card. But no, I'll get rid of the amphibious thing. Or maybe not, though, because you kind of have to value amphibious because nothing is going to... I have very few amphibious things just overall, so... 
we get rid of that that was kind of a simple adjustment and yeah like the only packs i've been getting lately are those ones that you get at the end of the month right or not really the no i guess it, it is the end of the month here so many of these card games uh reset their seasons in the middle of the month for some stupid reason like on the 15th or something that goes totally unintuitive so we'll go ahead and use the disco ball even though i'm criticizing it just because it is good but especially for this kind of deck that's more top heavy you're not gonna have like a lot of a lot of little weeny things to buff anyway so it just it seems way too expensive it should either be four cost for the same effect or it should be plus three plus three for like five because again it, it should get a discount because again compare it even to the other card the two mana give everything plus one plus one right you could just play two of those and get it more efficiently like sure having to have two of them is a little inconvenient but still it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So what could we get rid of here? And you know what this might allow me to do is to meet my condition of buying a zombie legendary outright. Or no, a zombie hero. I mean, that would be our first zombie hero because we've also been cocked on that level where we've never gotten a hero of any kind from a pack. Whether it be a plant or a zombie hero, right? That's why I kind of gave up getting packs because I just wanted a hero. So then, But then I got kind of hooked on event cards and I've just wasted like 2,000 plus on those just but some of them have been pretty cool it's just you know the fact that it's guaranteed is kind of tempting uh but then the first pack i open in a while happens to be a legendary and exactly for the class or for the type that i've been complaining about not having this is a little tricky because i don't really know what to get rid of everything is pretty much on point the raw zombie is kind of garbage honestly but again it's the fact it's just so unique just like many things that you know, you don't have anything else similar to replace it. So a lot of things are in here for novelty. Now, I don't feel like this ever is really that good. But it's still a good value card, like... But yeah, how often have I really used it? Kind of tough. Like, this is good. Do I not have three copies of anything in here? I guess this, but this is also kind of worth it. Uh, the team mascot and the these things, those are kind of like the half-hearted synergy that I have with this. Like, oh, we're kind of doing a little, a couple things with the sports and a couple things with the pets, just because that's all I have, right? So it's kind of inadvertent. This thing you almost don't even want, but just for the sake of it, you know, you're just giving them sort of a free plan. But again, that would be more effective as a, as a plant mechanic, like... And you know, this is so vague, like make a 1-1 one, one plan, but it could be for me then, on my side of the board. Like, it doesn't really make it clear that it's for them. Like, it, you think it goes without saying, but maybe it's just a troll. Like, I'm going to summon a plan on my side just to troll them. But, no, it's like, this would be so much better if it was a plant card that summons a zombie for them. Which, there might be an effect like that, and I just can't think of it. But it's like, then, you know, zombies don't have team up. And so they'll actually just be blocked off and screwed, right? If you don't put anything anything there to attack with. Whereas with the plants, they could just have team up. So it might even help them. Like that three cost thing. Like, oh, now I'll get my team up buff and make it a 4-4. Four, four, right, for three or whatever it is. Um, this is really tough. Everything is pretty much perfectly planned out and positioned with how I've done this. Hmm... There's really nothing I feel comfortable getting rid of. Even with these, like, oh, you have two copies, so why would you need them? But <clears throat> that's kind of the point of this guy is to have, uh, you know, to have kind of the top heavy stuff that the zombies otherwise don't really have anything high cost. Right, so the other two were kind of reduced to trying to play them for aggro, even though uh, super brains might not be meant for that anyway. But this, again, it's just what we have to fall back on. This you kind of want... I don't know, everything is just so perfect with it. I guess I'll get rid of one of these. Like, what do we have less of? The sports or the... This one is just kind of lower cost, so I guess I'll just go down to two of... Oh no, but we have to get rid of more than that. This is so weird, like I just don't want to get rid of anything. This thing is always such a big player in my whole style though. Honestly, I'd rather keep that and get rid of this. That always ends up being such good value in the early game. Yeah, we can at least flex these new legendaries, but let's actually go with Captain Combustible first. That's one mechanic also that I've never used, obviously cheesing with the fucking ads. Um, some free mobile games will just make you watch ads just forcibly, right? Not even for some pseudo illusion that you're getting some benefit from it. Or wait, I didn't even look 
to whether maybe there's something we want to add for the plants, but I don't think there was really. Right? Oh yeah, I did look because it's kind of just extra copies of stuff that I already have. So the assumption is if I already had two copies of them, I would have already put them in and I don't really want more than two. <clears throat> so we only got to rank 15 last month, but again, I, I don't play this for very long. So even if I theor theoretically could get to rank 50, Right, I probably wouldn't be able to just because of two things. Number one, I only play once a week for like an hour. But on top of that, I also only play once per hero or not even because if I don't have enough time. <coughs> but like who, even if every deck I was using was the best in the game, you're not always just going to win every single game that you play. So it's like, could somebody with the best decks in the game with only one try each once a week with each hero, would you actually be able to... Here you just go all in because that's all this deck is going to be about. Like all my decks are sort of pseudo aggro, but this is just full on aggro. Just don't even worry about it. Like who cares? It's still worth it. Just play everything on curve whenever you can. Just go all in. Don't hold anything back. Yeah, this was our next best AOE that we had like on anything before that chicken thing came along. Even though that's for zombies. Another thing they copied from Zelda, like when all the chickens attack you, right? Like what was I saying? The smoke cloud they copied in, in the regular PVZ just looks like cartoonish like the Wind Waker one. But no, the point is that... That's kind of a good synergy, right? Because they'll count for two. We lost to something funny actually at the end of last episode, like... We had, uh, I can't remember what it was. Whenever I hit whatever their zombie was, I take one damage and I had exactly two health. So the fact that I have team up actually killed me and I couldn't stop them from attacking. So I hit it twice, thereby triggering its effect twice. Uh, it's like some Joker jester looking guy. <laughs> but no, the point is that even if you had the best decks possible, the fact that I only play each session until I lose with every hero means that I would only get like seven tries. And so even if I had the best decks ever, it would be very hard to get to rank 50 under that condition because... Uh, and would it be worth it to worry about that or do I just go face? And the answer is... Eh, I guess I'll be smart about it, but technically you should almost just go face because that's the only thing you're going to have going. There's no scenario where I should be worried about that thing killing me, right? Because my only win condition is killing him before, you know, before he would have any chance of killing me anyway. I could have done the extra four to the face because I would have hit, you know, I would have hit his face with the, with the trick. This will kill the thing. It doesn't summon it, right? It, it brings it to your hand. And then, but this is kind of a better curve play, actually. If we just do this and then the, draw two cards or you should always draw cards first. Draw or generate conjure cards first because then you get to, uh... You know, kind of see if there's something better in there, which is a mistake I always make, even in Hearthstone. I'll always do the Conjuration effect last. Like, what if that was something better than what I played anyway? But no, my point is, if I can ever fucking finish it, getting distracted by what's happening, the point is that even if you had the best decks in the game, right, it would take a while to... You're gonna like win five, then lose one, then win three, then lose two. There's, you're not gonna just win every single game ever in a row and just get to rank 50 just like that. So I only get one attempt with each hero per episode to play until I lose. I mean, um, this would be fine, I guess. Seems like a waste of an effect, but I mean, we're just doing it for the curve play. There's nothing else to really put down, and I almost never get to use this card, but. It could be a suitable finisher if I need it. Now we could finish him with this except for the stupid block meter, so... Or we could troll him with that. We could just do both. Unless this somehow saves him, which I think generally it probably wouldn't, right? He'll... Oh, shit. You might say, oh, I shouldn't have done that, but then I would have, you know... It's not like I was going to kill him anyway. And this still... No, it might kill him, but depends what he does with the rest of his mana. <coughs> Fuck. Wait, that's not enough, though. Okay, fine. I mean, at least he's having to go a lot out of his way to do that, but now I'm going to run out of stuff, too. Damn it. Now, the one time I would be able to use this, I don't have anything out there to actually use it on. Fuck. Are you serious? Now I'm going to lose because I just don't get anything to play. 
Jesus Christ. Just give me something that's like one cost and I can still do this. <sighs> so stupid. Okay, that doesn't scare me at all, but it's like, is he gonna heal? That's my biggest concern. That's the one mechanic that often ruins my whole strategy with most of my decks because I can't recover from that in the long term of just them actually healing and dragging the game out a bit. Yeah, this category is always dead, so it's almost one of those strategic ones that you would say, oh, as a small streamer, this is a hotbed sort of uh, one to do because there's so many fans of, of the game and it's so passionate, right? Not that that's why I even played it or why I played it so much, but, you know, it, it definitely surprised me at least. Now, I certainly think that he'll be able to deal with that, but... Oh, my God. I'm just playing off the top deck. They always have a couple things last, but... Just give me something cheap enough that I can play with that, which is actually perfect. Because now, no matter what he does, whether he blocks with it... Or, no, he... I mean, he doesn't even get the chance. That would have been, like, way overkill. You're hitting him twice more, and then again, twice on the course of the turn, because you have the stupid coffee bean thing. The combustible has been doing pretty good. I can't complain. I just feel bad because he always dominates and, and milks all the screen time at the beginning because I always go with him first just because he's new. So maybe I'll save up actually for a zombie hero now because I would technically be allowed within my format to buy one because... But then I would need like 1750 because I'm not going to risk losing out on double Bad Moon Rising. Like I'll make the same mistake I did last time. Like the, the first time I saw it, I didn't take it seriously enough or I didn't have the... You know, the the currency ready to, you know, to actually buy it for 500 because I just wasn't thinking about that. So then I learned my lesson and said, okay, now I'm going to always save 500 so I have it in my back pocket. But then it's like, why not save a thousand? So now I'll buy one of them and say, oh, now I wish I would have bought two. Or now I'll buy two and then say, wish I would have bought three. But reasonably, you probably, two would be enough, right? You don't really want more than that. But I mean, fuck it. I would almost go as far as buying four of them just because I've wanted it so badly. So this is good for the synergy kind of immediately. And of course this one you do have to use as removal as much as I'm so trick happy to just do it on their face. That's kind of a cool animation actually. Yeah, that, that in itself is a pretty tricky condition, right? Just the fact that you have to do it in such a way that you get, uh... You know, you'd have to win once per every episode. A plant plate on this gets Amphibious, Conjure a Leafy card. We can save that for a little bit later. Plants here. Okay, fine. He's got a lot of little removal and debuffs and things like that but it's not that big of a deal so far because all my stuff is expendable anyway a deck that would make Raphael from Yu-Gi-Oh puke because he is always so he gets so mad if you destroy even one of his minions all right we go here can we three four no kind of a weird curve turn like let's do that and then do this and then we'll save that for later but then he might destroy it in the meantime so it might have been a waste and or wait, if, if I had known that, I shouldn't have even bothered. But it doesn't matter, because his deck's just all removal. And that one was actually very efficient. Wow. I mean, it would always be, too, because against this kind of deck, I'm always just going to have low-cost stuff anyway. My highest-cost card is going to be a trick that actually just, you know, is that triple attack one. Okay, maybe what this guy's using is a little bit too good, but... Sometimes I'll end up winning these matchups anyway because I kind of, uh... I should just ignore what he's doing. Or I guess it didn't matter if I can... It just feels like his, he's just way too good. His cards are just way too good. <coughs> That is the guy who has double Dark Matter Dragon Fruit, but not with this guy at least. But I mean, I'm just getting absolutely clown. That'll move there, then we'll do it again. Then we'll do this one. At least we'll kind of fill out the board a little bit. So if I had this Bad Moon Rising equivalent, which, well, what is it for plants? Like Cornucopia or something. That would be amazing because, but it's just too expensive. Like, 
it does effectively the same thing, but it's like a little better statted or... I mean, it's even a minion that is statted in the first place, but you would much rather have ba a Bad Moon Rising equivalent because it's just cheaper and much more effective. So we'll go here, seven attack. Yeah, I still have a chance of winning too, but it's just like... I would have to get so much damage in so quickly and it's just not going to happen. Or if I got that triple attack trick, but I won't even be able to use it now. Yeah, I mean, he's just way too top heavy. Now we'll get a chance to actually use our legendary or maybe I'll... Yeah, I should actually prioritize that. There's no rule that says like what order I have to play them in. But no, like that one life challenge. Okay, so I'm using the best decks in the game with all seven of my heroes, right? But if I lose a single game with each of them, right, I have to stop playing as that one for the whole week, regardless of how long of an episode I play. So that would dictate the length of the episode, which at the beginning was kind of more relevant because it doesn't really matter what I do now, but that would dictate the length of the episode. Like I'll go as long until I lose with every single one, which normally wouldn't even take that long. But, you know, now I just don't play long enough to do that. But the point being that would you really be able to get to rank 50 with only seven tries, right? You can only lose seven times total between all the heroes once a week, uh, no matter how good of, of streak you go on. So we'll actually skip the smash because we want to give uh, one of these a chance to use the legendary. Who got like more new cards? I guess we got the, we got the chicken thing on the other guy, right? So we'll give him a chance just to flex the new cards. Which again, that cowboy thing is actually pretty good. And I'm sure there's all kind of... That's almost like an OTK combo. You know, just... You, you can just tell it'd be used for that. Because you can get so many hits and... Somehow you just buff it like crazy. Keep it alive. There must be something very intentional that you can do with it. But obviously I don't have anything probably along those lines. Or I might have it without even knowing. But it's not like I built this in such a way optimally. So I probably could have made a rank 50 caliber deck, or maybe I even already have one. But again, I neither play long enough, nor do I play enough games. Because you have to accept the fact that, you know, you'll just play as the same one over and over and over a hundred times. Right, whether you're losing or not, but... That is very tricky. If you lose a single game, you're just done with that hero for the week. And that's regardless of, again, whether I played longer or not. That's still going to be my format. So you should do this in, in conjunction with something, but I actually won't even bother. I'll just save it for later to make sure I get the effect. Yeah, it would be you play. So, so I wouldn't even say you play once a week. You can play as much as you want in a week, but the, because that's just my weird, you know, streaming schedule format. But what the format would be if anybody else was doing it is that you get <coughs> one life one game, one loss per week per hero, right? So once I get all of them, I should almost do that as a finale. Like this month, I have that same format where every week I can play as every single one until I lose. And then I have to get to rank 50 by the end of the month. And if I don't, then I have to stop playing or I have to delete my account or something like that. Right? So that would kind of make it make sense. And that was almost what I was originally intending to do. Now this is a grave sun, so you can't do it. But obviously, it took way longer to get some of these heroes than what I would have thought. And of course, we have this big trend of every time I get like a new card that I'm excited to use, it takes me forever before I get to actually use it for the first time. Like the Dark Matter Dragon Fruit that happened. I just didn't get the chance whether I was winning games or not. I still can't do that now. It's just not working out on curve or because of the stupid gravestone aspects. So let's bully and beat up on Solar Flare because we always uh, just clown her because everybody liked her so much at the beginning that, you know, get Solar Flare, get Solar Flare. But I haven't been too impressed or it's not really a style of play that I even want with like all the anti-hero stuff. It seems to be like they have more than almost anybody else, Solar Flare. Or at least I have a lot of those with them. We go do this. Okay, three cost. What is this? Dino Roar deal two damage to a plant, to a random plant or plant hero. Okay. I mean, there's no reason, obviously, not to do it. I'm just kind of thinking whether there's a merit in playing it in the other lane, but I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, actually, it would have mattered as soon as I say that. 
Of course, I should have played around that. Then they'll have something destroy a zombie on heights, but I, I don't really remember who has what when it comes to that. I've probably seen like every single card in the game be played at some point, but I'm just not going to remember them, right? But then again, people end up using the same stuff over and over, so maybe I haven't. So now because of the grave, you actually don't get that buff, right? It just kind of... That's the downside. We should already pretty much have won this. Or not really. Or yes, really. Unless this stupid block meter saves them, so... For fuck's sake. It's very rare that I actually get through all of their block meters, right? You're either gonna win or lose before that even happens, because it just takes forever. That is one of the dumbest mechanics, though, in the history of all... Not even card games, but just games in general. Like, what's worse? The block meter in this game, or the fact that Marvel Snap has only six... Six turns per game, guaranteed. Probably that, because that's more impactful. Even though the block meter is annoying, right? It doesn't always have to be that big of a deal and then people say oh just use bullseye but like you shouldn't have to go out of your way to subvert a stupid mechanic like that you know it's, it's just gonna have too much impact overall no matter what but that would be my, my dream come true a bullseye anti-trick sort of deck so like with stuff that increases the trick cost or just has untrickable so an untrickable bullseye card that also says uh that reads like every trick they play costs x amount more like the dragon fruit plus six or whatever uh the football guy football zombie does it like plus two right every trick costs like two more okay that was quite a impactful turn but it almost just shouldn't matter you're gonna have four so if i just do this you should just lose to the combination of these two we didn't actually get to flex the legendary despite the fact that we won which is still fine but you know we'll, we'll go on a 10 game win streak but what we'll really be craving is a chance to see that stupid cowboy guy now i'm going to keep using it some often when people get mad but obviously you play it to the left as much as possible just do what that one chick says in the song i should use that as my title or something now we finally get to follow the advice of that song that starts with to the left to the left whatever the fuck that is I can't remember what it is or who sings that or maybe that's the name of the song. All these obscure random memes and jokes I've made with this game that probably nobody ever would have or I guess because nobody's even ever played this game because it's so dead all the time but apparently these bots are very deceptive where it makes people think the game is actually active. I just don't believe it because of how many other more popular card games I've played where it's like how can the queue times in this game be shorter than Magic the Gathering Arena or Hearthstone? You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's like a region thing that they have. You know, you're, you're looking for somebody in in your... In your same region that you play in. But even then, I don't really get it because... It just doesn't feel right. And there's no shame in saying a game like this would have bots. But it's almost hard to believe. And it, it's almost like I don't even not enjoy playing against them. Like, it, it feels fine, but... Some games it feels really boring or obvious that you're playing a bot, so the AI is actually not too bad, or this game is just so simple that even their shitty AI could handle it. Again, like Hearthstone, the AI can be really bad, and I don't know why. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to make it a little better. Like, they almost did it on purpose to make it bad in some of those solo adventures, just because, you know, to try to make it easier, but... but this would be good if he has no way to deal with it. Let's just see if we can actually play that cowboy at least once. But that was at least a cool pickup here. I get rewarded for resisting the event card by, you know, getting rewarded by actual legendary from a pack. But it's not like I bought the pack anyway. But no, we want to save up to a thousand so that we always have that in my back pocket. And then with the excess from the thousand, this guy's just going to stay on the board the whole game and just solo me. Lima Plurd. I don't even know how, to, how you say that. This is like something out of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. I'm accusing them of stealing from a million Nintendo games this episode. Plus one plus one zombies destroyed. Not really a big deal. 
yeah that isn't that surprising like that i've even played this long and opened at least a fair amount of packs but that is the first actual zombie legendary that we got technically because again the other one just doesn't count when you just get it from a pack that's guaranteed to give it to you like some special smash uh smash pack yeah that's clearly an optimal deck that's how you know because he has that thing in there like what synergy could possibly make that be the case uh let's go here and then go there <clears throat> you should be pretty much dead that was kind of a slaughter if it's over already yeah play around the effect of that by simply not killing other stuff right Even though he's frozen, he's going to be buffed to hell. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this down again. It is so weird that zombies don't have team up. That's one of the most confusing mechanics in the history of any game, just from a contextual standpoint. Because aren't zombies always the ones who are teaming up against you because they have a horde of them and you're the one who's kind of playing with fewer? Like, yes, you're putting multiple plants in a row, but that's just to combat the fact that they're putting even more zombies in a row, so... It's just very weird from a conceptual standpoint. Okay, that one was almost too easy. Okay, let's do maybe one more whether we win or lose with Infinity and just to see whether we get to play the new card that we got or not. We haven't even gotten it yet, right? Or we beat that guy so fast that maybe we were just about to but we just didn't even get the chance, which is still a good reason not to be able to play it, but... It's always deceptive at the beginning too. It's like, oh, we're finally playing lower ranked people because the match ranking is always so busted, right? Like, uh, you know, oh, you'll be ranked 20 and you'll play like a rank 40, but you're not really playing them because, or I mean, like you could be now too. It's just that they wouldn't be there yet because the season just started, right? So it makes it seem like, oh, finally the match ranking is fixed or finally it's working properly, but it's actually not. But this is one of those games that I'd almost be embarrassed. This is like the Yu-Gi-Oh of anime. Like where I'm embarrassed not to say that I played Yu-Gi-Oh as a card game because it's great. That's fine. But but to say that you've seen the whole show, right? All five seasons, all 200 episodes. And I actually kind of liked it, at least for some of the characters and stuff like that. Kaiba is good. Bakura is good. But the point is that you'd be almost embarrassed to say that you watched Yu-Gi-Oh! But you'd be almost embarrassed to say that you played this game. Because it's not even bad, it's just like... It's very casual and very strange. And it, again, it could have been a lot better, and the fact that it's mobile exclusive is really the, the real death knell of it. That's why I almost don't even feel bad for any lack of success it might have had, because... Why not just put it on PC and it would have just done ten times better, I guarantee it. Just like what I would say to Nintendo, too. Like, just put Zelda games on PC and everybody would buy them. But then nobody would buy your shitty systems because, you know, that's the only system seller that you have is your own IPs. Like, come on, just give me the cowboy just for the sake of it. And let me just play it in the water just to troll people. Just because I love Amphibious so much, I just always play everything Amphibious there. Like even the Dark Matter Dragon Fruit, I'll just play it there and people will be pissed. Like, oh, you're missing one of the lanes that you could attack in, right, with the with the triple shot that you get. But it's still kind of worth it sometimes because then what you're doing by playing it in the water is that you're trying to basically... Um, you're trying to preserve its safety to make sure they can't use a trick to kill it because it costs six more and to keep that effect going for as long as you can. So you're sacrificing one lane of attack to assume that they, they're they not going to have anything amphibious strong enough to kill it for a while. And they obviously can't kill it with a trick because you're going to have... Uh, they can't kill, kill it with a trick anyway because you're going to have... Um, like, here, let's just go for amphibious. Um... Because it's going to cost six more anyway, so... Honestly, that has some legitimacy to it. Whereas the Cowboy, I probably I just made a mistake and clowned up when I was using it. But it's because it's not a card I normally have. I can't remember if that was in like some event game that they let you play. Like the weekly event. Or whether it's in... Uh, whether it's in something else. Like... I just got it from like a Conjure effect or something. So if this worked the way it did in the actual game, I would die. But actually it wouldn't because... 
you know, the blo stupid block meter will still save me. Ah, <sighs> shit. So we are pretty close to dying, and we don't have enough to quite do that. This is always a great finisher card, just to, you know, the, they'll do the best they can, and there's no way they can really play around it. Like, oh, we'll just fill up our board so we don't die, and then I just get rid of it. So, like, what can you do? Um, when revealed, move the zombie. Um... Revealed, make a 3-1 zombie that makes a... Okay, so what this will do is it'll always guarantee that we, you know, fill up the other slots, right? Because then we won't die, but actually we might... St oh, wait. Wait a second. Wait, but what could I have even done then? I guess I could have just put it there to try to kill it. Or I could have put something else stronger there. I don't know why I did that. <clears throat> God damn it. That was such an obvious play too. I just wasn't paying attention. I was even mocking the fact that, oh, you can't attack four times like you're actually meant to. Like it does in the actual games. But obviously two was enough there. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to actually use that one, but that's okay. We just get to at least celebrate the fact that we got one and finally leveled the playing field and very suited. For the, I mean, some of my titles have referenced the fact that the plants have been spoiled, but this is so literal that what are the chances that I use this title and I get it not only in the episode, but even at the beginning without going out of my way to even buy a pack or anything. So, uh, yeah, see, see how long it takes me to save up to a thousand though, because even if I did that weekly quest every time, it would still take a while, but the fact that it takes me multiple weeks to do it is even worse. Okay, see you tomorrow. Or what I might actually do is I might actually do this later, because I have like this other setup that I'm using now sometimes when I have extra time. So instead of doing chess on it like I normally do, I might actually try this just to see. I mean, it should work just as well. It doesn't really matter, but... <clears throat> 